So here what we are doing, in Prince 2, we have principles, those principles are correlated with the themes and these are my themes, plan theme, risk theme, change, progress. So in the theme, we are doing everything. Okay, so we are taking everything, we are taking care of everything here in themes and we are executing the processes, these are my processes and this is my environment, this is my company, right? So these kind of questions come, so just see the questions, right? Which among the following is one of six aspects, so six variables I discussed, right? So six variables may what we have, time, scope, quality, cost, risk and benefit, right? So here the scope is there. So like this you will get the questions, right, for foundation. So this is the foundation question. Okay. So uh, then we have which among the following is one core integrated elements. So structure of the principle. So PT, PT I told you. Principles, themes, processes and tailoring, right. So this is. So here we have the processes. The answer is C like this. So these kind of questions come, okay, so we will see on the paper, right, so when once we will do your foundation paper, you will, 75 questions I told you total, okay, out of 70 you need to score. Now, principles, okay, so what are the principles we have, first, continued business justification, second, we have learned from experience, <coughs> third, we have defined roles and responsibilities, Fourth, we have managed by stages. Fifth, we have managed by exception. Then focus on products. Then tailored to suit the business environment. Okay. So these are my four principles. These are my seven principles according to Prince 2. And principles, I told you simple definition about the principles is some ground rules we have, some guidelines we have. Okay. So we need to follow those guidelines. So according to principle, these are the seven guidelines, these are the seven ground rules or principle, these are this. Okay, first we have the continued business justification. So this principle says, there should be a continued business justification. First, why I am doing this? For any project, if I am not getting any benefit, so why I will do this? Okay, and that justification means what profit you are getting. So profitability and that profitability should be over the life cycle of a project. So over the life cycle means from plan, initiate to close. The profit should be there. So sometimes you know project fail, sometimes project scrap. Why? Because the profitability is not justified in between. If I am saying, saying that, okay, I have planned for profitability, 8% uh, profitability I will get. While I am in execution phase, the profitability is going down. So, so that time I can check everything. So we have many checks. I have many formulas. I have many techniques to check this. Right? So that justification should be continued from start initiation to close. That is called the continued business justification. And this continued business justification I am putting on where? I am putting on a business case. Okay, so this is my first principle. Second we have, so I will show you in detail uh, when I will go with next slide. Second we have the learn from experience. So learn from experience I told you, projects are similar. Okay, not same but similar. They are, right? So, if you want to take anything from previous projects, so you can take good thing. If I am saying that I have already created metro from one metro line from Noida to Gurgaon and now I am creating Noida to Greater Noida. So, it means, so I can take something from the previous project. That is called learn from experience. So, learn from experience after, you know, completion of a project. So, you are creating a lesson learned documentation. Lesson learned. So in lesson learned what I am storing, I am storing what went well, what went wrong. Okay. So why I am creating those the documents? Because if I need something for future projects, so I can take from the lesson learned. So this is the learn from experience principle phase. 
So what you have done previously, so you can take from the previous project, which is good. Which is wrong, you will not take uh, here. Because you have already, you know, uh, understood after the wrong uh, thing you have done earlier, previously. So you will not take the wrong thing. You will take the right thing for future projects. Okay, so that is the meaning of learn from experience. Third, we have the defined roles and responsibility. It means roles and responsibility. Who will be the role? What responsibility of those roles? So that we need to define. So who are the main stakeholders we have? Who will do what? Like this. So we need to define. This is my third principle stage. Then manage by stages. So I told you for a project we have different different stages. That is also called the subsequent delivery. If design is completed, you need to go for development. If development is completed, you need to go for testing. Okay. So these are my many stages. So I need to manage all these stages. Okay. So mainly we have two stages. That is one management stage. Second is technical stage. So management stage where I'm doing planning. Planning for design, planning for development, right? So those are my management stages and technical stages where I'm executing. Technical things where I'm doing that is called technical stages. So I need to manage all these stages. Okay, this is my third, fourth principle stage, manage by stage. Then <clears throat> manage by exception. So manage by exception shows here. So there are, you know, four levels. According to Prince, uh, there are four levels. What are four levels? First, we have the corporate level. Okay, so I can show you the levels here. These are the levels we have. Corporate level, that is called pro corporate or program management. Directing level, that is also called the project board. Third, we have the managing level, that is called the project managers. Then we have delivering levels that is called the team managers. These are the four main levels according to Prishu. So this is what, this is a kind of organization structure according to Prishu. Corporate, man, who will come on to corporate management? Chairman. Owner of a company, that is the corporate management. And directing level, we have a project board. So in project board, we have three people. One is executive. Then we have senior supplier, then we have senior users. So executive may, executive will come, you know, uh, the CEO, CFO, CIO, these are coming under the executive level. Then we have the senior user, senior user may we have, you know, the product owner who is uh, communicating, communicating with, the, with the end users, those are the senior user. And senior supplier, who are the suppliers, senior suppliers, who is supplying, senior suppliers. So those are coming under. So this role and responsibility we will see in detail once we will discuss the teams. So there is a theme also, organization theme. Okay, so in organization theme we will discuss all the roles and responsibilities very in detail, in detail. Right? So that is my directing level, that is also called project board and project board contains three roles, executive, senior user and senior supplier. Then we have the managing role, so in managing role we have the project managers and then last we have the delivering roles and delivering roles we have the team managers, that is called team lead. Okay, so those are the four levels. So here we were discussing the manage by exception. Okay, so manage by exception means how much you can tolerate as your level. If you are a project manager, if I am saying that, okay, activity A will take, so you have estimated that this activity will take two days. Okay, so you are taking two and a half days for those activities, that is manageable for you or not. That is a exception for you or not. That you can tolerate or not as a project manager. So for all level, if I'm talking about team level, team manager level, there is a tolerance limit. If I'm saying that in a project level, there is a tolerance limit. If I'm talking about the directing level, there is a tolerance limit. So for all level, there is a tolerance limit according to against the six variables. Okay, so what are my six variables? Time, scope, cost, quality, risk and benefit. For all the six variables, there are some tolerance limit 
and those tolerance limit I am taking in managed by exception. Then we have focus uh, on yeah. Tell me. Sanjay, can it uh, can it come again with this statement? How you manage uh, manage by exception and so, you are correlating with the uh, six variables. Six, six variables, right? How you are making? Can you make that statement? Yeah. So what I am saying that we have levels, right? Four levels I have explained you. Team manager level, project manager level, directing level, yeah. and the corporate management level. These are the four levels. Yeah. Okay. If I am saying that you are a team manager, you are a team leader. So as a team leader, how much you can tolerate time, how much you can tolerate cost, how much benefit you can tolerate, how much quality you can tolerate. So again, six variables as your role, how much you can tolerate. So that is the managed by exception. Six variables, okay. Yes. So if you are a project manager, so have you have, have you experienced any time? So if you are a team level, team leader, if you are a project manager, so there is a cost limit for you. Okay, this much you can invest. This is your budget. Okay. If yes. Yes. More than this, you need to ask with your manager. Getting me? Yes. Yeah, I got it. I got it. No, I got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is the tolerance yeah. limit. If you have a limit and you are going beyond that limit, so you need to take uh, approval from your manager. Or the manager have a you know kind of uh, um, the tolerance limit for those, so he will approve that. And if he don't have, so he will go up. So these are the levels we have. And these are the tolerance limit. Tolerance limit against the variables. And those are my six variables. Okay, then we have the focus on product. So focus on product means the quality. So I need to check the quality. I need to focus on quality. So what quality I need to provide, I need to focus on that. Okay, that is my quality. Then tailored to suit the business environment. So tailored to suit the business. So tailoring means what complexity of a project, what finance I need for a project, right? Financial things, complexity of a project, size of a project. So what servers I need for a project, what material I need for a project. So everything I'm tailoring. I'm adding all the things I'm adding that is called tailored to suit the business environment, right? So these are my seven principles. Any question here, you can ask me. Uh, no, Sanjay, you can go. Ahead. Okay, now in detail. So first we have the continued business justification. I told you there should be a justifiable reason to start it. So why you are doing this? Why, what, you, uh, I mean, what is the reason behind this? So for, you will, you are getting something, so that's why you are doing a project. So that justification should be there and that we are containing, maintaining in a business case, that is my continued business justification. So the justification should remain valid through output, through put, sorry, yeah, throughout the life of the project. So over the life cycle of a project, that justification should be there. Okay, then the justification is documented and approved. Then the justification is documented in a business case. Okay, so for benefits, for cost, for time, everything, where I'm putting, I'm putting in a business case. And if for whatever reason the project can no longer be justified, the project should be stopped. Okay, if you have defined that in planning stage, okay, this benefit I will get. I told you earlier also. And in execution, you are not getting that benefit. So you need to stop it. So you will not put from your pocket. Okay, so this is the meaning of continued business justification. This is my first principle. Then, second we have learn from experience. So I told you, the project team learn from previous experience. Lessons are shout recorded and acted upon throughout the life of the project, okay? So we learn from previous project historical data. We learn as a project progresses. We learn as the project closes. 
it's the responsibility of everyone involved with the project to seek lesson learned. Okay, so this is the final documentation. While I am submitting a product or the service to the customer, I am delivering product. So that time I am creating a lesson learned. That is the final documentation of a project that is called lesson learned. Okay, rather than waiting for someone else to provide that. Okay, so I am taking, I am maintaining, the, so this is also a part of quality, right? So documentation is a part of quality. So for everything you are documentation, you are creating a document and that document, final document you are creating as a lesson learned and for, previous, for future projects, you are taking something from the lesson learned. Anything you can take, anything. So that is called the historical data, historical information. You can take the estimation techniques, sorry, estimation from the previous project. If I am saying that I have created already metro from Noida to Gurgaon. So I know how much time I have, I am taking from creating one pillar. For one pillar, how much estimation I have done previous project, in previous project. So I can take those estimation from there. I can take the cost estimation from there, right? So that is the lesson learned. That is the we the learn from experience we can take. So this is my one of principles here. Learn from experience. Roles and responsibilities. So these are my main stakeholders. Business, user and supplier. Okay. So business, user and supplier. So who are in, involved in a project. So those are my main stakeholders. So according to this principle, project has defined and agreed roles and responsibilities within an organization structure. That engages the business, user and supplier, stakeholder interest. So these are my main stakeholders. Business is my customer, supplier is my service provider and suppliers also involved here. User is my end user who are using the product and service. So for all I need to define responsibilities, roles and responsibilities. So this is my principle, roles and responsibilities. Then managed by stages I told you, main two stages we have management stages and technical stages. So I told you that if design is completed, you need to go for next stage, that is development. So there is a SGFT cycle, there is a waterfall cycle we have. So without design, I can't start the development. Okay, so this is the mandatory rules. This is the, this is called hard logic. This is called hard logic. Without design, I can't start the development. Without, after development, I need to do testing. Okay, without development, I can't do this, uh, this thing. So these are the kind of hard rules, hard logic. Okay, so management stages where I am planning, where I am doing, uh, you know, the planning for development, planning for testing, planning for designing, and technical stages where I am doing technical work. Okay, so I need to, I need to manage. So project is planned. So here a principle project is planned, monitor and control on a stage by stage basis. So planning I need to do for all stages. Monitor, I need to monitor all the stages. I need to control all the stages. This is called the managed by stages. Okay, I need to plan, I need to monitor and I need to control all the stages. If this is a designing stage, if this is a development stage or this is a Testing stage. I need to monitor, plan, and control. Then, manage by exception. So I told you manage by exception. So four levels we have. These are my four levels. <clears throat> so for all the four levels, the tolerance against six objectives. So this is I have explained you. So how much I can tolerate as my level? If I am a manager, so how much I can tolerate my cost? How much I can tolerate time? How much tolerate I can quality? scope, risk, benefit. So how much I can tolerate as my level? That is called managed by exception. Okay, then we have the focus on product. So focus on product focuses on the definition on delivery of products, in particular their quality requirements. So quality, if I am talking about quality, so quality is my one, de there are many definitions. Just go through with Google, just find two quality definitions. So one I'm telling you according to one uh, uh, theory. So confirm is to requirement, confirm is to requirement. So what confirm is, what requirement I have from the customer, I'm confirming that the same thing I'm delivering to you. 
within scope, within time, within cost, I'm delivering. That is also quality. Okay. So here you will see the product description includes. So this we will see in detail while we will do the processes. So there is a document that is a product description. So that is containing the purpose, the composition, the derivation, format, quality criteria, quality methods, everything. So that we are focusing. That is done by the focus on product. Okay. So, so product description we will uh, discuss uh, for future, you know, slide. Okay. For uh, we will discuss in processing. So a successful project is output oriented, not activity oriented. And output oriented project is one that agrees and defines the project product for prior to undertaking the activities required to produce them. So here we are focusing on the quality. What I need to deliver? What are my quality requirements? What are my ex what is my expectations? Okay, what what is the customer expectation? Right? So I am delivering the same thing. I am not. So that is my focus on product principle phase. And then last we have tailored to suit. So tailored to see the project environment means French 2 is tailored to see the project environment, size, complexity, importance, capability and risk. So I need to add everything here. I need to tailor everything. What is the size? What is the complexity? What is the importance of a project? What, I, what are the capabilities I need? What are the assets? Okay. So first day I think I told you the asset, right? Tangible and intangible. Okay, so what capability, what knowledge I need, what risk I need to involve and in, uh, you know identify. So I need to tailor everything. So tailor the project management method to suit the project environment such as the business processes. So what processes I will use. Okay, what procurement management, why, what I need to procure, make or buy decision. I need to buy a server, I need to make a server. That is my procurement management, finance management. Okay. Any investment I need to do on that or not, right? So finance. So this is my tailor to speed. So project initiation documentation to describe how the method is being tailored for the project. So this PID contains everything. I mean the project objective, the scope of project, okay, the design of a project. So this is containing in PID. PID. This is called project initiation documentation. Okay, so set project controls based on the scale, complexity, importance and risk involved in the project. So everything I need to tailor, everything I need to add here. So that is called the tailor to feed the project environment principle. Uh, okay. Sanjay, um, yeah. what this PID will contain or it will contain all uh, you, you said something. Yeah, right? project objectives, what are my scope? Okay, what is the high level time? So this I will show you uh, uh, in next slide when once we will do the uh, you know detail. So I will show you this what it contains. So this is the high level you know scope of a project contains. It is a high level uh, view, right? Yes. So everything I am containing in a PID about the project objective. What is the objective? What is my scope? Okay, what timeline? What are the roles and everything I'm maintaining here in a PID? Okay. Okay. So these are my seven principles. Okay, according to Princeton. Any question here? You can ask me. Uh, no, sir. Yeah. Okay. So. These principles now I will use as a piece because I told you that principles means the guidelines, principles means the, the, the go ground rules. Okay. And I already said to you that these principles are related with the themes. Okay? Now if I will talk about the, uh, the foundation exam. Okay. So in foundation exam, you will see what is the purpose of this principle. What is the purpose of this thing? What are the objectives or themes? So we will see that. Okay, what are the objectives? What are the purpose? But if I will talk about the practitioner exam, so in practitioner exam, the question is coming only from the themes and processes. 
there is no question from principles there is no question from tail ring only teams seven teams from seven teams question comes and from seven processes question comes because the no. principles yeah yeah Okay, they they will not question about the principles. That no. is what you meant to say. No. Yeah. Okay. Seven because seven things, seven processes. Yeah. So all questions coming from the seven things and seven processes in practitioner paper, but in foundation you will see something, some questions from principles also, some questions from things, some questions for training, some questions from processes. So in foundation you will get all the questions from all the PDPD structure. Okay. okay.